It was teenage war on the home front. Authority. I get stoned every day. You're a b up all your jobs yourself. Until they were sent to the world's strictest parents. I'm horrified and disgusted with you. It's what about you, you becoming a better person. I'm going to give with this punishment and we are going to do it. For a week, they fought tough rules and discipline. Wow. Every step of the way. Well, we say goals. I really don't want to be here anymore. <laughs> but now they're home. Have our Aussie teens really changed? He's used up his nine lives. Are they perfect little angels? They rid my daughter of, of a lot of demons. Or do they still have the devil inside? You've got 48 hours to pack your bags. And for some, it'll be an amazing reunion. <laughs> it's hard to explain how you can have gratitude for people you've never met. Sixteen-year-old Jess and her mum Jenny are trying to make a fresh start. This is great, having a second pair of hands, Jess. Today, they're moving okay. into a new home. Moving into the house was something that I thought would be good for, for both of us. Chuck. Why? I hate pink. I like it. You don't... But eight months ago, okay. Jess was out of control. Jess. Come on. I'm not doing anything to you to the lawyer. Jessica. Ah! She'll just do what she wants, when she wants. I tore her head off. Come on. So go shove it up your ass and do all your jobs yourself. Take that. So Jenny decided to send Jess to live with new strict parents in America. I don't think they'll be able to change me. It took me 16 years to get like this. I will never, ever, 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 ever live that down. The, um, it took me 16 years to get like this. Hello. Hi, how are you? Jess spent a week under the strict rules of the extremely conservative family. We don't allow alcoholic beverages, no TV or movies over PG-13, no cussing, including taking God's name in vain, no back talking or disrespect, no drugs. No cigarettes or tobacco of any kind. Little end of smoke. Jeff. Who do you think you are, Kyle? Honestly. What it's about you it? becoming a better person. This tough love approach paid off. Parenting is not easy, but the key I think with kids is to is to put the time in and the love in and being willing to discipline, but um, with that time and love. Kathleen was just an absolute angel. She's got such a big heart. And she just made me realise that, you know, you just breathe, you know, just relax. Like, there's no need to just snap all the time at nothing. There's just so many good things ahead for your life. I just don't want to see any of the other junk destroy it. You've touched our lives this week. We love you, baby. I truly believed that they performed some type of mini exorcism. Something happened over there that just rid my daughter of, of a lot of demons. I'll put the saucepans in here, yeah. The way she treats me is a very significant change. Just so much more respect. I want to pass them to okay. you. Back in the days, if my mum had asked me to help, I would have put my finger up on her and said, go sit on it. You've been a fantastic help. Thank you. Now I care about my mum's feelings before I knew it used to break her heart. But that's the thing, I didn't care. I didn't, I didn't care. And plates. They're now feeling so confident in their relationship. You've got to keep it simple. They've decided to put it to the ultimate test. I've never taught anyone to drive, so just remember that. I've never stepped behind the wheel. <laughs> Fix it up a bit, because it's got to be properly displayed. And don't laugh, Jess, this is serious. <laughs> Turn the key. Slowly, 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 so you're going like that. Put on the brake, put on the brake. <laughs> oh, I can't smell that rubber. <laughs> slowly, slowly, slowly. Jess's home life might be back on track. Brake, brake, brake. But some of our other teens are struggling to stay on the straight and narrow. I mean, ultimately, it will come down to um, your attitude. Yeah. 16-year-old Jono from northern New South Wales was a serial runaway. I have reported Jonathan as a missing person on three occasions. 
They get all up in arms and I don't care. That's probably why I think that there's not much wrong because I don't care. I don't want to come. I'm still like three quarters drunk. All right, well, I'm going to come back and get you in a couple of hours. No, you're not. You're going to go home and we're going to do this another day. I get stoned every day. I often ask him if he's taking drugs and he always says no. I have a habit of telling people what they want to hear. I can be very sly. We're now at the stage where we're really out of options. After a week in South Africa, I want you to take this letter for us. A letter from his mum hit home, and host mum Portia was there to support him. Stay with me today. Whilst you're living in your own little world, hanging around with your new city friends, enjoying the thrill and excitement of total freedom, I sit at home wondering where you are, whether you're still alive. Wondering whether you're still alive? Wondering whether you're sleeping in the bushes or lying hurt in a ditch somewhere alone and frightened, unable to contact me. I miss her. I miss her. And I'm sorry for everything that I did to her. And Dad. I put them through so much and I didn't even mean to. When Portia revealed the story of her eldest son, the message finally seemed to get through. My son was just like you. Mm. For more than a year, he was out there. I didn't know where he is. Yeah. Up until one time, I was called by one of my friends. They told me that he is in jail. I went there, I bailed him out, mm -hmm. I supported him. Mm -hmm. But by that time, mm. he was discovered that he was HIV positive. Huh. I don't want that to happen to you. Mm. He's dead now. He's six feet under the ground. Buried him. Back home, Jono told his mum what she'd been wanting oh, to oh hear. God, I missed you. <laughs> but I just want to say, I feel like we can start again. And, and start from square one and just and work from there. Five months on, has Jono really been true to his word? I think I have changed since I've gotten back pretty dramatically. I'm back at school. Jonathan went back to school of his own volition and I was actually delighted last week he came home from school with um, a form that he'd completed and he's actually decided to go into year 12 now. Go straight up. Playing for South Africa. Oh, hey. The only reason I think I hated school is because I didn't like myself. I just learned so much in South Africa. Like, it, it really it, it broadened my mind and broadened my thoughts. Go, Jazzberry. The relationship between me and Portia was actually pretty strong. I just I could tell her anything by the end of it. You know, the mother's not the enemy. But is this just another case of Jono talking the talk? We had a honeymoon period of about six weeks um, where he was as delightful as I, I know that he can be. Um, sadly then he, uh, he went out one night and had too much to drink and I should imagine probably um, engaged in some, uh, some drug taking, I don't know what, um, and a, a number of things happened on that particular night. Jono ended up in a police cell and for the first time his mum turned her back on him. He was just wailing. He just was devastated that I had left him there and I had said to these police officers, you know, hands up in the air, I can't do any more. He's your problem now. And, uh, and I, I just left him and, and we left him there for 10 hours. I let myself down as well as a lot of my family members, a lot of my friends, because, you know, they thought that I'd changed, and I'd told them that I had, because I felt that I had. But it was just, it doesn't matter if you do 400 good things and one bad thing, people are going to know you for the bad thing. Jono is now on his last warning from his mum and the police. 
time to wake up the kids. Rise and shine. Oh, shit. You will get up. Strict parents mean early starts, and our teens hated it. you got to get up. If not, I'm going to drag you off bed. And in Tennessee, 16-year-old Stacy simply refused to move. No, no, this is not an option. We don't sleep till noon here. If you don't get up, you're going to get extra punishment. Mm. Oh, bite me. Stacy has chosen not to participate. I can't make me do something I don't want to do. I treat people like they're nothing. Is there anything I can do for you? A cigarette. Is that what I think it is? Mm. Fuck this. I'm not used to punishment. Getting up this early is fucked. It was shocking seeing myself the way that I acted and everything. Right, we'll just put these away. I was very stubborn and I got angry very quickly. I'm a lot more calmer and I'm a lot more happier and everything, but I can still have my whingy moments. But I'm a girl, but we all do them. It's Josh, Macy, Brad and Ben. I was a bit apprehensive at the beginning about this. I thought, well, you can't change a lot of, you know, things on people straight away. But it, it has been a good experience for Stacey to go and spend some time with other people and really appreciate what the Davies family did for her. Can you get me another pig, please? Oh, I'll Stacey's lived with her dad since her parents <laughs> split up two years ago. That's my, that's my pig. <laughs> and he's not the only one who's grateful to the Davies. Her mum is too. She rings more to make sure that her mother's all right. Um, and she says, she says more that she loves me and I love her, of course. That goes without saying. She went to a place that she'd never been before, a long way from home. She hadn't been away from home. And they were a nice couple, of course, that looked after her and cared for her. Taught her some things that we obviously couldn't teach her or she didn't want to learn from us. Boy, Dad, I'm going to TAFE. All right. Stacy came back from America and started a hairdressing course the very next week. Boy. I have my TAFE. My family and I were getting along really well. Like, we've become all so much closer. And I've kicked out all the bad people in my life, pretty much. I'd realised that, wow, my life is going the way that I want it. I do not want to stuff it up or anything. Stacy, can I just give you a tip there? Just take your bangles off, because you're jangling. I pretty much have already stopped the tantrums that I did in America. I look at back in them now, I'm just like, why did I do that for? I reckon it is part of growing up. She's learnt that you do respect people and you learn to come to care for your parents. We're not bad people. We still do love you. I know. Everyone loves me. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> If, if Two months after Jono got back from South Africa, he found himself in a police lockup. You've used up your nine lives. If there's a situation. His mum has drawn up a behaviour contract in a final attempt to rein him in. I want you to sign it at the end, and I'll be signing it too. Um, rules for living at home with mum. And if you're able to to manage to live by these rules, then I'm happy for you to stay at home and continue living here. And if I don't? That if you break the contract and do any of those things, you've got 48 hours to pack your bags. Keeping Jonathan on the straight and narrow requires so much more than conventional discipline. He needs to have a structured uh, routine. Um, he needs to get an education and he needs to mix with children his own age. I don't want um, his smoking around the house, inside or outside. So I can still smoke, but just not around the house. I'm not happy about it. Okay. And definitely no alcohol. Yeah, well... I've, Absolutely no alcohol. Yeah, I won't drink in the house. Um, this is my last chance. If I mess up and do something stupid and the police are involved again, that's it, I, I, I'm gone. But having watched his behaviour and his attitude, there's been a, um, a maturing in him. The new rules also mean Jono has to start giving back. Can we get out and uh, stay in the right direction? No. I'm just moving some furniture. It's part of me. Uh, it's part of my, my good boy deal. I have to help out with just some simple volunteer work. This is the closest that we have been to having him on track. I'm under no illusions that Jonathan won't stuff up again because he's a teenager. I guess it's the degree of stuffing up. 
It's still early days and they're waiting for me to slip up. Like they're still, they're watching me and saying, okay, I'm waiting, 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 waiting. But I'm not gonna prove anyone right anyway. In the year 10 school book, I was voted the um, biggest smart ass and also the biggest party animal. She tells me I'm a horrible mother. She's been possessed by something. Don't go near my bag. She's just someone that lives in my house. 17-year-old Emily had quit school. I'll tell you. And taken control of the family home. When mum's at work, I get my friends over and we play drinking games. Yeah, 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 yeah. Once I turned 13, it sort of got bad because mum started taking up a job. She was away a lot. I can't enforce anything because I'm not here. Today, Emily is doing something that would have been unthinkable just five months ago. She's preparing to go back to school. Me and Mum are going shopping for school uniforms for my new school. Um, we're going to get some school supplies, like books and pens and stuff, and then we're going to go out for lunch. I got back from Ireland and seeing the kids over there and how academically driven they were, it sort of made me think, I have to do something. So I specifically sought out a strict school. I really need someone constantly on my ass to do something. Earlier this year, Emily was sent to Ireland for a crash course in traditional Catholic values. Emily, you right? Did you remove that pier, those two piercings? I'm not taking them out. Yeah, but you also said that you'd try it our way for the week. That looks horrendous. It's disgusting. Take out the whole lot, no, please. I'm not taking it out. Come on. Emily, these are not your decisions. Yeah. They are my decisions. No, I have to wear them in my face. I was adamant. I was not taking them out. There was no way. It's staying in. And I knew I was fighting a losing battle. I had to take them out. It looks worse with just the hole. That's OK. Since no, that no. day, Emily's had no piercings. I don't really want them anymore. They were old Emily. Not new Emily, so I just didn't get them re-pierced. I think that's the senior uniform there. No piercings, the back to school. Um, we're looking for school and that's just the yeah. start of the Commons' impact on Emily. I think when I was over there, I saw that there's obviously something wrong with my relationship with Mum, with my relationship with my family, and with how I go about doing things. Show to Mama. <laughs> well, that's good. The Coleman kids, oh, no. they act like teenagers, but in a more respectful way to their parents. And then I, you know, I sort of saw that. I was like, well, I can still be a teenager, but I can also be a daughter as well. I like the pants. I think that looks a lot smarter and a lot neater. I'm amazed with what the Commons were able to achieve in a week. I like this uniform. I like it. Yeah. I think it looks pretty smart. Makes me feel smart. I'd love the opportunity to meet them, to say thank you. I don't know what you did, but thank you. Leanne and Emily are about to get that chance. Queensland teenager Memphis dropped out of high school and into a life of hardcore party. She had zero respect for rules and her mum. Well, the deal is, remember... There is no deal, Mum. Well, there should be a deal. If you're not coming well, there's home... there's not a deal. You need to tell me you're not coming home. Why? Well, it's because... pretty obvious if I'm not home that I'm not coming home. Memphis took that same attitude to Singapore. You will be going to school. It's boring. I hate classes because we can't do anything, so we just go to sleep. And it's just all together. Stop running, guys. Stop running, Memphis. Stop running. We're going to rip my skirt out. OK, I'm going to check you. All right, you I think ready? you have really done something that really breached my trust. I'm not going to talk to you yeah, because you I am really down. frustrated. Yeah, so I'm not going to talk to you now because I need I to calm down. I don't want to talk to you. Seven months on, and Memphis is, well, still Memphis. Rules and regulations here, nothing compared to Singapore. Like, only rules I have is just don't get caught speeding. <laughs> and that's about it. Within days of coming home, Memphis was in trouble again. We got home from a party, and I was really drunk, and we were at the front of the house, and me and Mum got into, like, a fight. When she came back from Singapore and she came home a few nights um, intoxicated, that's when I said, that's enough. But you're washing, I see. Yep. I gave her the ultimatum, you know, follow the rules or move out. And she decided um, she didn't want to follow my rules, so she moved out. 
it's a lot better now that I'm not living at home. Like, when I go out, it's not what time are you going to be home, where are you going, who are you going out with, what are you doing? I can just be free and do whatever. Don't have to, like, put up with any of her mumminess. You're still oh. underage. And to be drinking, you're sort of... You're Mom, breaking. I'm 18 in, like, five months. Well, still, and then I'm going to the still, valley. Party on. still underage. I'm a little bit disappointed that she didn't change, but I really didn't expect a, a miracle or anything too drastic because I don't think people change overnight. I think I am still generally the same person now. Just do whatever I want, go crazy, have fun, meet new people, just, just enjoy life. I've got this letter. Hello, my daughter. While you've been away, it has given me the chance to reflect on a lot of things, specifically, specifically our, our relationship. relationship. When our teens went overseas, the only link to home was a letter from their parents. <gasps> I don't want to read this. I'm ashamed, I'm ashamed by, by the way, way you treat, treat me. me, and if you were not my son, I would have given up a long time ago. It takes something like this to make you realise what you're like at home and like how wrong that is. It's like a massive eye-opener. For Jess, the letter from her mum hit especially hard. I haven't been able to stop crying since you left. <laughs> I'm sad for the fights we have. And your words said in anger. Oh, Jess, this is sad. Sweetheart, you don't know how many times I lie awake at night watching you sleep. And you look just like an angel. So innocent. It breaks my heart to see you on the brink of destroying your life. She said some beautiful things to me that she's never said that kind of stuff before. I love you with all my heart. You're my world, my life, my Jess. Be happy. I think this is just the first step of me growing up a little bit more. Oh. Oh. I love you. You're a good girl. I don't think one week changed my life, but I can say that one week changed my relationship with my mum. Hi guys, are you ready to order? Emily was barely on speaking terms with her mum. Garlic bread. But that was before she went away to Ireland. Um, we talk to each other and we can actually go out and have these days where we go shopping and we have lunch and stuff because it's so much easier to be around each other now and not, not as tense as it was. I've pretty much got back the Emily I like. It's fantastic. Mum Leanne owes it all to Emily's host family. The fact that they loved her and I love them for that. That they could see the real Emily. <laughs> Come on, big fella. Emily's role model in Ireland was the eldest daughter, Evelyn. I really clicked with Evelyn. It was like we weren't even strangers. We just, we'd known each other forever. So fat. Yeah, just big boned. <laughs> when she came first, I thought maybe she was a bit on edge and just unbalanced. And I think now she's a lot more balanced. Throughout this week, she's become like uh, my fourth sister. We've learned to trust each other. And now right. we're just really close and, you know, we have a lot of fun and, you know, I really value our relationship. You just have to come back and visit? Time. I will. I promise to come back and visit or to Pinky make you promise. Guys. I just only want good things for her and uh, I think I'll really miss her. I hope we stay in contact in the future. Evelyn's been talking about maybe making a trip over here because she has some family in Perth. Like maybe towards the end of the year or the start of the next year, she's like, I might see if I can get some money together and, you know, come over and stay with you for a little bit. Well, Evelyn has brought her trip forward and Emily has no idea. So I've just arrived in Sydney and I'm going to go to Emily's house. She doesn't actually know that I'm coming at all, so it's going to be a really big surprise. <laughs> Um, I have to go up to the school and grab those books and everything that they're sending over for me before I start. The two friends have stayed in regular contact. I'm delighted that she's made these changes in her life and um, decided to go back to school and, you know, be a bit more proactive than she was. But at the same time, I hope she hasn't changed too much because I, I loved the old Emily just the way she was. <laughs> 
I'm just really looking forward to seeing her. I know a few friends that do mask you. That I can get to come help me. I'm excited that she's here. Like, I really never thought that we would see each other so soon, and now that she's here, I'm just so happy. <laughs> I can't even explain it. I'm just happy. <laughs> and I heard you're galloping. I galloped up a little hill. Really? Like, it was like rocks and like up a little cliff. Oh, well, maybe we can do that sometime during the week. Yes. Yeah. Apparently. I'm so glad she was able to make the trip, and I hope her and him have a ball. I did bring it. Yeah, I did. Did you think I had? Ooh. The jacket that you used to wear every single day. So put it on, you look like a real pro. Thank you. It makes my riding better, I think, <laughs> when I wear my jacket. I don't think I'm a completely different person. Like, I still sometimes get angry and irritated, but so much better than I was before. Whenever me and Mum get in a fight, I always think, what would Evelyn say? And then I sort of try and calm down and talk to Mum instead of yelling at her. I'm so glad you came, Evelyn. I know, I am too. This is gorgeous. You changed my life, Evelyn. You really did. I'm not just saying that. Thanks. It's helped yeah, to me to understand my Mum better and it's helped me build a better relationship with my mum. Like, we're still not perfect, but we're so much better than we are. And I don't think we would be at that stage without the show. When I think about how Emily was before and how she is now, I don't know. I feel like I did when she was born, full of hope. That's it, that's it, I don't know. Just full of hope, knowing that she's got so much ahead of her that she can achieve and she hasn't given up. And that's, that's the best thing, that hope that I had for her when she was born. The whole experience of South Africa has just been absolutely amazing. One in a lifetime experience. I'm coming back. Is it? Come here. I could ask you to stay long. John is very, very, very nice. He's always calling me mom, mom, mom. I like that. And uh, it makes me feel good, very good. In South Africa, Portia took Jono to visit an orphanage. It's home to 100 kids with no parents to complain about and no home to run away from. I'm hoping when they are here today, they are going to think of themselves. They are going to think that we've got this opportunity, we can be good in life, and they will, they will listen to their parents. I'm just hoping. Portia has had an enormous impact on Jonathan's life. They formed a very strong bond, and she was able to impart a lot of knowledge to him about his life and the way he should live it and how his um, adverse behaviour impacts on others. Portia reinforced the message with a parting gift. This is from the bottom of our heart. This is the clock that Portia gave me on the last day of my South African experience. It reminds him every morning when he gets up that it's a new day. Uh, it's time to move forward and that time shouldn't be wasted. Portia is in my mind every day, you know, she's like that little God figure on my shoulder saying, you know, just do the right thing, do the right thing, do the right thing. And I suppose to, to a degree my conscience is on the other shoulder saying, mess up, mess up, mess up. Since signing his behaviour contract last month, Jono hasn't messed up. And for that, Lyndall says she owes at least some debt to Portia. 
If I saw a Porsche tomorrow, there would be a lot of tears. Um, on my part, I think that she would be delighted to see how far Jonathan's come. Um, and, uh, you know, if there's anything that I could ever do for them. Sorry. <laughs> Isn't that silly? Fuck authority. Melbourne teenager Micah was at war with his mum. I want you to clean up your room. And I want you to shut up. That's a lot simpler than cleaning my room. He has pushed me out of the room and he slammed the door. Are you wearing a moustache? Do you want a razor? I've got one. It's fucking disgusting. That's fucking sick. In America, host mum Nisi and the rest of the Davies family challenged Micah's attitude. I saw how Ben and Josh, they treat Nisi like she's a god. They have so much respect for her and like, why shouldn't I do that? So you mean you got one life, you got one mom. I mean, why would you want that, that big part of your life to be such a, like a struggle or a daily life kind of thing, you know? Thank you. When I was there, she was just so loving. And this is like, even though I'm an asshole to women, she's still so loving to me. It's like, all right, maybe I should think twice about what I say. But when Micah was reunited with his mum, <laughs> he struggled to find the right words. I'm good. I kind of awkward because I really feel like, honestly, a shit son. Felt bad. Did I tell you? Did I tell you that? No? No. No, I, I didn't you tell didn't her. didn't tell me I that. I didn't tell her that, but. It's good to know. But that. supposedly mothers know everything, so she should have been able to click. Yes, mothers know everything. But Mike has discovered they don't have to do everything. Yeah, it's like a new regime. Mum set the standard. This is what I have to do. So I may as well do it. We get along easier when I do it. The only time Mike ever cleaned his room before was if someone was coming that he really wanted to impress, say a girl. He's a lot more mellow, not as defensive, nowhere near as defensive. It's just been easier to reinforce rules, which is amazing. <laughs> He wouldn't have even done this before. He would have been gone. The skateboard would have been under the arm. It would have been F off and off he's going and raising his voice, hands over the ears, so not listening to a word I'm saying. So this, this for me is big. Today, there is an incentive for Micah's hard work. Oh, very good. They're getting ready for a milestone. His first chance to drink. Legally, that is. Today, I'm turning 18, so I'm having a party, you know, getting, probably, I'll, I'll get drunk, but, you know, it's, it's expected. Um, I, I'm, I feel like I've got to grow up a bit, though, after it, because, you know, I'm becoming an adult. And that means accepting that his mum is always going to be a big part of his life. Yeah, I'm glad she's going to be there. I wouldn't have any other way. I want her there. You know, she brought me into the world. hard to see your baby grow up, <laughs> but he needed to grow up and he's maturing a lot. We're really getting things on track. Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday, dear Micah! Happy birthday to you! Congratulations on your 18th. I know, and all my very best wishes for a prosperous future. Yeah. 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 Adelaide girl Bailey's about to turn 18 as well. But five months ago, she was in no hurry to grow up. I'm so much better than you. I always get money out of my car. Mama's like, this did you. You think you're amazing, but you're not. You're a she hates me. I just want to kill her. She's got this impression that, no, she doesn't have to work. This is the car that my mama bought me. I don't like that car anymore. So I'll just crash it. But yeah, then hopefully they'll buy me a new one. I get everything I want, pretty much. When Bailey was sent to South Africa... I thought South Africa was supposed to be, like, dirt. I actually don't think this is Africa. She finally met her match. I'm not going to clean here. You are going to clean here. Quickly, please. Don't be naughty. You are going to wash the floor in the kitchen. And are you the... serious? Yes. She is in my house, and I'm the hair mother now. I hate cleaning. Why did you just Because I wanted to eat something. Eat them. She's definitely going to do it. It's like me making them eat shit. 
I don't like it here. I'm gonna go home. No one liked me. Um, the mum, I forgot her name. She was like, you can like do the dishes, clean up, cook dinner, and you can mop the floors. And I was like, no. I am telling you now, I'm going to give you this punishment and you are going to do it now. No, because you're being so unfair. Bailey. I'm leaving. Well, because I don't like you, because you're mean and you're cruel. I hated it. It wasn't really a great experience for me. Because, yeah, I was unhappy, like, the whole time. It made me realise how much, like, I miss my mum and pa and, like, how nicer they are. And, yeah, so it made me realise, like, and my food, like, the food that my mama cooks is so much nicer than the food they cook. I'm still spoiled, but I'm not as spoiled as I was because I am growing up now. I'm finding a huge difference. We actually haven't had a fight yet. So that's really something. Bailey's turning 18 and there's one present she won't be getting. Well, I would like them to get me a new car, but, like, I know, it is my responsibility for a car, so I guess I have to fix it myself. Try to be a bit of a panel beater and got a hammer. Panel beaded right there. I got under the car. Didn't quite work. I looked at it today and I thought, that looks like a Flintstones job. Woohoo! <laughs> birthday to you! So Bailey's still in no rush to grow up. And for tonight at least, no one seems to mind. We've still got a way to go, okay? But I love you. Pa loves you. And. We're always here for you, you know that. Okay. All right? <laughs> Love's always been there. And from what I found out, she's saying when she was overseas that she does love us. That's a nice feeling. He's been home five months, and already Jono's South African experience seems a long way off. He has no idea, but it's about to get a whole lot closer. I'm feeling nervous. And uh, I'm feeling excited at the same time because I understand that Jonah does not know that I'm coming. I can't wait. I'm really, like, excited. Um, I want to see my son. Well, since the exams come out, because I've got trials. Yeah, I'm going well with IT. They're very happy about that. We've got to do a database in IT. And I'm pretty much... Oh, my son. <laughs> What are you doing? Oh, oh, oh. Mm. <laughs> Jonah? Portia, this is my mum, Lindo. How are you? Hi, Thompson, how are you? It's so lovely to meet you. Oh, oh my God. Jonah, uh, what are you doing? <laughs> I didn't freak. I was like. I never, ever, ever thought that I'd ever see Portia again simply because of the fact that she's all the way over the other side of the world and she walked in the door and my jaw almost hit the deck. It was just all the memories that she'd said to me, everything that she'd done for me, just come back and I'd been like, yep, I had a tear in my eye. I, I had no idea. He didn't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Portia has had an enormous impact on Jonathan's life, more so than any other person apart from myself. She is a wonderful human being. <laughs> From one mother to another. Oh, no. <laughs> Thanks, thank thank you. Thank I just, you very much. Uh, I just thank you from the bottom of my heart for giving us our boy back. Mm -hmm. To be honest, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not an expectee. Uh, I didn't know also what I was doing to him and uh, what is it that I'm, I, I was supposed to say. Yeah. But uh, I was just trying as a parent. I always get a little emotional when I talk about Portia. If he hadn't had um, that time with her, then I think he would have ended up the same way as her boy. I've missed Bush greatly. It's just like a big hole has just been filled in. This is very important yeah. for you to understand, to stick at school, yeah. to, to make sure that you, you reach your goals. You remember you said to me, Mom, I want to be somebody. Yeah. And I, I really want you to be that. Yeah. I'm sure you heard what I, you... I never thought I would come to Australia. But uh, today I'm here to see Jono, to see how he improves his life, what is he doing about himself, if he's really going to school. 
and uh, I'm, I'm very glad to hear all the news that he is really going to school, he is doing well. They saw you before and yes. they must see you changing. Yes. They must see a different person. Yes. Please, just do that for me. Yes, do that for us. Yes. Do that for your mom and do that for yourself. Anasem, please my son. I love you. I love you too. I love you. I love you. Oh my God.